Thanks for joining us. Happy Friday to you. I'm Marlon Bowling, your tour guide to the ag commodities as we watch your grain trade and a couple of outside factors that are maybe having an impact here on the grain trade. This morning, before the markets opened up, USDA did announce an overnight export sale, kind of getting back into the swing of things here once again now that we have the uh, offices uh, back open and operating here. So this time it was corn that we had sold, and the amount was 205000 744 tons and it went to unknown destinations it was for the 2018 and 2019 marketing year. Now we also had some new information that uh, came across a little bit ago and it is related to the latest NOPA crush numbers. So the uh, January crush was reported to be at 171 Point six three million bushels of uh, soybeans. That turns out to be about the fourth largest of any month, apparently. Uh, the trade was looking for maybe something like 169.6, I believe. Soy oil stocks came in at 1.549 billion pounds. The trade was looking for something maybe a little bit higher than that. Soy meal exports, they say, were 906,000 tons. And uh, the trade was actually, or actually in December, it was 826. So they did pick up there. Even a year ago, it was 860. So an improvement there as well. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what the markets are doing here. Uh, with all this news in mind here, in the corn market, we have the March corn now back on the plus side, but only by a couple of ticks. We have March up a half at 375 and a quarter. December up a quarter of a cent at 399 and a half. Boy, it does like to play with that $4 benchmark. On the soybean trade, right now on the nearby March contract, it is three and a half higher now at 907. So it added a, about a point and a half here um, after that NOPA crust number came out. July now three higher at 934 and a quarter. And on the wheat trade, it's been under pressure here during the course of the day. Chicago March still down four and a quarter at 502 and three quarters. And on Kansas City March, it's trading at 476 and a quarter, down five and a quarter yet. And if you look at Minneapolis on the March contract, it's trading uh, at 574 per bushel. That would be down just three quarters of a cent. Scott Gigas joins us. He is with Walsh Trading. He's at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago. Hey there, Scott. How are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm uh, doing all right. So not a lot going on in the grain trade, but the weakness continues in the wheat market. The soybeans firming up just a little bit. How much of that do you credit to that NOPA crush number? Yeah, the crush numbers, they added a little bit of a positive tone, but everything is pretty much recovering for the big liquidation that came out yesterday due to all the weaker export numbers. You know, cumulative sales in soybeans is off about 20 percent. Uh, you know, the corn numbers were a little bit off. Wheat numbers were all, I mean, it was pretty much a weakness all across the board just due to the export numbers. Seen a lot of strong liquidation, a lot of fun liquidation. Uh, it, what is drawing attention to for, for what we're looking at is on the corn and the soybean you're still seeing the upward skew to the call side. However, in the wheat, you're looking for the downside puts. The puts are a lot more active right around that $5 level, 500 however you want to look at it. So we're going to keep an eye on that. So right now, with the option volatility, it's still a little bit elevated across the board just due to all these headline risks that have been playing games for the last six to eight months or so. So we're going to keep an eye on the headlines, see if anything new is going to come out. But either way, the option volatility is still elevated. I expect a little bit of pop in volatility just going into the weekend because no one knows what's going to come out over the weekend. And uh, thanks for the reminder, no trade on Monday, of course, because of President's Day. So um, it'll be Tuesday before the traders come back and, and and uh, really re-establish the market once again. Uh, Scott, we'll come back here in a moment and we'll take a peek at what's going on in the cattle and hog markets. We're talking with Scott Geekis and we'll be back after this. Some of the big movers in the commodity trade today, uh, one happens to be the energy market. Let's take a look at West Texas Intermediate crude for you. And here you have the March contract now up $1.13. It is at $55.54, still above $55.5 per barrel. So uh, triple digit gains all across the board here on the crude oil market. Another one I noticed, let's take a look at orange juice. And on the OJ futures, big time drop today. Hmm, March down $2.20 at $115.50. That's a significant drop there. Uh, let's take a look at another one here, lumber. 
Lumber making a big time move. Check this out. March almost limit down. It's only uh, 20 cents away from that. It is down $14.80, all the way down to 408.50, making a huge drop. Now the deferreds are not nearly that far to the downside, but I just wanted to point out some of the bigger movers here in our ag commodity trade today. I want to go back to the trading floor and visit more with Scott Geekus of Walsh Trading. He rejoins us right now. When you look at the livestock trade, what does that tell you? Where we have the cattle under pressure today, lean hogs are kind of mix, but the most weakness in the feeder cattle trade. What do you hear there? Yeah, I mean, going into with the polar vortex, uh, colder than normal temperatures going through, so it's going to put a little bit of pressure on the cattle market just in general. You know, but in, overall, for the last 10, 11 months, I mean, it's been in a steady uptrend. You know, the 130 calls are still very active, even with this little bit of a pullback. So now we're going into the cycle where demand tends to drop off uh, a little bit, but we're going to see how that's going to really play a big factor. For a definitive support and resistance level, we're looking at that 120 level in cattle just alone. Okay, February is 25 higher. It's at 126.38, but all the other months are still lower. It's been that way most of the morning. April down 38 at 127, even for 100 weight. If you look at the feeder cattle side, boy, there for a while it was over $2 lower. March now down $1.42 at 142.65. On the lean hog trade, we have had strength in the nearbys, a little weakness in the deferreds, but now everything is on the plus side. We have April up 65, we're at 59.35, and the May contract 75 higher at 68. 845 and nearby is leading the charge to the upside here Scott um, is this a sign that uh, maybe that big long-term low is now in the rearview mirror uh, well, we're going to see. I mean, it all goes back to everything that is all the headline risk. So is is China going to start this import campaign? Now you're running into other problems with Canada and Mexico, the NAFTA 2.0 per se. You know, we'll see how that's going to play out. Um, that needs to be done. If the tariffs get it dropped just even a little bit, you're going to see a, a spike in price. Hopefully those exports will show up, but it's all going to depend on what is going to be the next headline that our traders are going to be watching. All right, a lot to consider. And, of course, as uh, Scott mentioned, we do have a three-day weekend coming up in the markets. Scott, thanks for joining us, sir. Appreciate Thank it. You. Scott Geekus of Wall Street.